She was just like, you need to stop doing that. And then I tried to change the subject. I go, how is school going, boys? And my sons tell me, well, we didn't have school today, technically. I'm like, well, I, what's going on? He said, well, there was like a school shooting drill. I never heard of this. You know what this is? They have drills that they make kids do uh, where they practice what to do if somebody comes to shoot up their school. I'd never heard that before. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> then I had to tell my sons the truth. I didn't want to tell them this shit. Son, son, listen to me. <laughs> fuck that drill. <laughs> somebody comes to your school and, and wants to shoot it up, I'm just going to be honest with you. You probably going to get shot, nigga. I'm just being real. <laughs> You got a famous dad, I talk a lot of shit. They gonna be gunning for you, little buddy. <laughs> Just stay low and run in a zigzag pattern and don't try to save anybody, son. Do you understand me? If you're a parent, this shit is terrifying. This shit is real scary. All the parents is looking at each other crazy because we know as parents that one of us is raising the shooter. <laughs> Just don't know which one of us it is. All we know for sure is that if you're a white parent, the chances that it's you. <laughs> exponentially higher than the rest of us. It's fucking crazy. You know, I hated school too. It never occurred to me kill everybody in school it's fucking crazy just do what i did nigga try some things have you skipped school nigga skip school take a walk and meet some other kids fuck school nigga. And you know what i said that's all i said first of all i'll tell you right now what i said uh and i will tell you that this was not a joke it's a true story and i just happened to tell it all right what happened was i went to a gallery party all right I don't know who in here has ever been rich before, but these are very nice parties. Uh, you know, wine and cheese and ball of conversation. And there was a few eccentric types, one of which was a very wealthy man that happened to be wearing a dress. I don't know what you call him, this is a tranny or dra a drag queen, perhaps. Whatever it was, this is definitely a man. And this man was definitely on drugs. I don't know what kind of drugs he's on, but I knew he had too much. He didn't look good. It's like this, he's like, ah. Oh. He looked sick, and all his friends were standing around him, concerned, trying to revive him. I don't know whether, it looked like some kind of gay CPR, those fanning and shit. Like... I saw all this from a distance. Now, I should have minded my own business, but I got curious. I was like, oh. And I went over there, all I said, I said, excuse me, gentlemen, gentlemen. Is he okay? And then they looked at me like I was evil. Oh. She is fine. I said, word? Oh. I'm sorry, I didn't know this is what we were doing. Um, here's my thing. I would support anybody's right to be whoever they feel like they are inside. I'm your ally in that. However, my question is, to what degree do I have to participate in your self-image? Is it fair that I have to change my whole pronoun game up for this motherfucker? That didn't make sense. Seriously. If I put on an Argyle sweater and I'm like, hey everybody, I feel like a white guy in this sweater and I want some goddamn respect in a bank loan. That's not gonna work. Give a fuck how I feel. Why don't I give a fuck how you feel? Nigger is a pronoun. Well, there was no time for a philosophical debate. This was an emergency situation. I said, fine. Sorry, guys. I was just worried because... because she looks terrible. And she just fell off the bench. It appears that her dick is popping out of her dress. No matter if I call an ambulance champ, I'd rather not be at a party where a tranny ODs. There's too many questions to answer. <laughs> we blacks, we look at the gay community and we go, God damn it, look how well that movement is going. 
Look how well you are doing. And we've been trapped in this predicament for hundreds of years. How the fuck are you making that kind of progress? I can't help but feel like if slaves had baby oil and booty shorts, <laughs> we might have been free a hundred years sooner, you know what I mean? If Martin Luther King was like, I want everybody to get up on them floats, <laughs> get your bodies good and shiny. I've been searching for what's missing But the answer remains hidden It's still far left You can see it. You ever, you ever have this happen? This is how confusing it is. This, this is the practical application of what I'm talking about. Like a guy be out, this happened to a lot of guys. You be out at a club, bar, right? You just kicking with your boys and, and a girl walks by and, and man, she looks good. She looks good. Not good in that classical way. I mean, you know, I'm talking good, like, she got half her ass hanging out her skirt. Mm. Her titties are all mashed together, popping out the top of her turtleneck and shit. And you with your buddies, right? You with your buddies, you got a couple drinks in you, and you see a guy, you might try to talk to her, this might not come out right. I don't know what you say, but, damn, look at them titties! Right? The girl gets mad and she oh, uh-uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Just because I'm dressed this way does not make me a whore. Which is true. Gentlemen, that is true. Just because they dress a certain way doesn't mean they are a certain way. Don't ever forget it. But ladies, you must understand that that is fucking confusing. <laughs> Just is. Now that would be like me, Dave Chappelle, the comedian, walking around the streets in a cop uniform. Somebody might run up on me. Oh, thank God. Officer, help us. Come on, they're over here. Help us. I'm like, oh, just because I'm dressed this way does not make me a police officer. It's like, all right, lady, fine. Fine, you are not a whore. But you are wearing a whore's uniform, I'll tell you that shit right now. How old is 15 really? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. I'm not saying that a person is as smart as they're gonna be at 15, that's not what I'm saying, man. But I am saying 15 to me is old enough to decide whether or not you want to be pissed on. I mean, that's me. If you can't make a decision like that by the time you're 15, then just give up, motherfucker, because life is way harder than that. I make tougher decisions all the time. If you don't want to get pissed on, just get the fuck out of the way. It's not even a decision. If I start peeing on the front row, they're not going to have to calculate and think, oh, how do I feel about this? Am I okay with it? They just move. You can do that at 15. I, I could have. I've been 15. When I was 15, I was doing stand-up in nightclubs, I smoked reefer from time to time, friends were selling crack, I was trying to finger fuck people. I knew what was happening around me to some degree. Getting pissed on was the least of my worries at 15. Trust me. But it keeps coming up. It's a lot of confusion around that age. Anytime 15 comes up, people freak out. Like when that girl Elizabeth Smart got kidnapped, right? Remember in Utah last year, 15-year-old girl Elizabeth Smart was kidnapped, and then they finally found her, and the whole country was relieved. And I was the only one saying, damn, she wasn't that smart after all. <laughs> not because she got kidnapped. That could happen to anybody. I'm not knocking her for that. I'm just saying, if you kidnapped me when I was 15, you got to take me further than eight miles away from my house, man. God damn. <laughs> you can't hold me prisoner around shit I recognize. I'll break away. I'll, I'll break away. Fuck off me, nigga. That's my bus stop. I know where I'm at. I'm going home. <laughs>